We are back with a tactical dive into a game that has reignited my excitement for Armour 4, Armour Reforger. Despite its rocky launch in 2022, which initially had me staying well clear, the game has undergone a massive transformation that's just too compelling not to explore. Thanks to continuous updates and a passionate modding community, Armour Reforger is not just a prelude to Armour 4, but a standalone marvel in its own right. But this is Armour Reforger. First off, Armour Reforger isn't just any game. It's a bridge to Armour 4, testing the waters with the new Infusion engine, all while offering modders a shiny new workbench to craft their magic. Set against the Cold War's tense backdrop, it throws you onto two vast islands, Everon, a huge 51 square kilometer open world, and Arland, a smaller 10 kilometer map with both boasting stunning terrain and elevate this tactical shooter experience to be on par with some of the best games out. Diving into gameplay, the first thing that hit me was the overhaul of interaction menus. Now we're talking about fluid exchanges with contextual controls and quick access hotkeys that make everything from inventory management to combat a breeze. And yes, for those of you on console, it has controller support for everything you need. And speaking of consoles, a huge leap forward in the Armour franchise is now we have crossplay. So now all of you console kids can play alongside the Master Race. Kidding, kidding, kinda. <laughs> Movement and animation have also seen major upgrades. Fine tune your pace with the scroll wheel much like Escape from Tarkov. Dodging bullets and sneaking up on enemies feels a lot more natural. But what really stands out is the weapon modding system. Just hold R and you're tweaking your arsenal on the fly, tailoring it with attachments that you've got on hand. Now let's take a quick tactical pause. If you're enjoying this journey through Armour Reforger and want to be part of a growing tactical community, smash that like button right now. It's a huge boost of support and tells me you're loving what you see. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on notifications. Not only will you never miss out when I drop a video, you'll also join a community that shares your passion for tactical gaming. All right, back on track. Shifting gear to visuals, and it's clear that Armour has caught up with the next gen. From the lush foliage to dynamic water mechanics, every aspect contributes to an immersive warsome experience without sacrificing graphic fidelity. Communications also had a huge overhaul with the game introducing a straightforward radio system with multiple radio channels easily adjustable with a scroll of the wheel. It's simple, yet still immersive. Now onto vehicles, which has to be probably my favorite thing about this game. A critical component of Armour's gameplay has been completely reimagined. Whether you're driving or flying, the experience is seamless, enriching the game with a level of excitement around vehicles that has recently been dwindling in Armour 3. The addition of helicopters in Update 1.1 only amplifies this. The UI in vehicles is amazing. Simply look down at the dash and find controls from hazard lights all the way up to the ignition and see a lovely prompt to interact with it. I love it. But what about performance? Well, I don't want to shit on Armour 3 too much because it's still one of my favourite games, but let's be honest, the optimization was average at best. Reforger, however, seems to be pretty stable. I'm getting about 90 frames consistently on ultra settings, and that's on an i9-13900, a 4080, and 64 gigs of DDR5. Now, there's currently two modes available, Conflict and Combat Ops. Now, if you've played Squad before, you'll feel right at home with Conflict. It's a PvPVE world where you try to take control of key locations from both AI and other teams. Master the battlefield and collaborate with teammates to achieve objectives in a challenging and ever-changing setting. Utilize resources to construct radio towers, forward operating bases, fuel stations, vehicle repair facilities, and heaps more. For the more co-op PvE-focused players, Combat Ops is for you. No two missions are the same, and the missions are always dynamic. Drop in and complete missions like eliminating a high value target, destroy vehicles or clear areas. It makes for great co-op immersive tactical experiences. Now what's wrong with Reforger? Well, to be honest, not too much. I really can't pick too many things wrong with the gameplay side. The only negatives I have are from our Armour 3 modding guru who builds our missions and he says, and now I'll directly quote him because I'm so new to it and I have no idea what the fuck he is talking about. But for all you modders, he quotes, it's so deeply complex that you have to download the source development kit and use it like that. And it's not built into the game. 
The Game Master is a really accessible version of Zeus, but it's like 5% of the features of Armor 3 Zeus. You can plonk down prefabricated fortifications and bases in positions that are locked, and you can't change where they are. So you have absolutely no freedom to create scenarios outside of the vanilla map. Now, on to the price. Oh, shit! So how much is it, and would I spend the money if it meant my kids have to go hungry for a week? And the answer is, yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> nah, but seriously, for $30, the game is definitely worth it for those who like Squad and Armor 3, both which I've reviewed previously, and if you want to watch them, I'll throw them up on the screen now. I'm Timmy Tenders, stay tactical, and I'll see you in the next one.